So SD-WAN was really created initially to solve for that problem because the old problem was more binary where you could use solutions like MPLS uh, to connect those physical user locations to the physical application locations, right? But as those applications start to diffuse into the cloud, now those MPLS connections aren't uh, connecting everything anymore because the internet is here and you have to have a, a separate way for these users to get to those applications. So just using two internet connections in many cases can be a great solution if, as long as those connections are optimized. And that's really what SD-WAN is and how it relates to this shift in architecture between the user locations and the application locations. Um, but a hybrid architecture is still relevant today because some of the applications still live in those physical data centers, right? Like the one that we're in today. Um, so having an MPLS and public internet connection working in tandem with an SD-WAN appliance can be very relevant for a lot of corporations today. And that change that we described, you know, when we are moving from this physical user location to physical application location paradigm to a diffusion on both sides model, uh, it completely shifts the way that traffic is, is uh, traversing enterprise networks. So it needs to be optimized in a new way, and it needs to be secured in a new, in a new way um, that appliances can't quite address in, in an elegant manner or in a, in a way that provides enterprises the level of agility that's really needed in the marketplace. In the same way that unified communications simplified how voice and collaboration worked. And I don't know if you are old enough to remember the days when voicemail was its own product, yeah. living in its own box by a whole range of different vendors. Call recording, call accounting were all completely separate functions from the PBX, for example, that did call control. Unified Communications brought all of those elements in a converged um, solution, and then eventually that became a, uh, you know, a server-based solution, which then got virtualized and then moved into a data center to house uh, and host uh, Unified Communications for the enterprise, and now it's a cloud-delivered subscription. So it's this natural evolution uh, where you go from these standalone solutions to then they get converged, and then they get uh, put into servers and then virtualized and then moved into the cloud. Um, and now that cloud delivered subscription is the ultimate version of how those services can be delivered. We saw the same thing with Microsoft. They actually used to put different applications on different servers and then the exchange server converged it. And then, and there's still some customers that use Microsoft exchange servers today. Um, but Office 365, when released in 2011, became a super superior consumption model for those applications. And now Office 365 is normal, almost expected for most employees. And um, it competes squarely with competing uh, similar platforms like G Suite and others that uh, are all cloud delivered subscriptions. And now that's the model. Same with UCAS, right? So why have networking and security stayed in the appliance, in the, in the hands of the appliance empire for so long? Simply because no one has put those elements in a converged state and then cloud delivered them until Cato. So we've seen and have witnessed now the rise of this software defined set of controls for things like UCAS, for Office 365, for cloud instances, where things can be done in real time by the IT team. And in many cases, this is why they buy appliances, so they have control over it, as opposed to using managed services. So what uh, this new SASE architecture is able to bring to bear is that same software-defined real-time change control feel paired with the full transparency that we talked about in a platform that's a managed service. So it's a first-of-its-kind co-managed um, mm. platform.